Hello, welcome to lecture 5 of this course. This is lecture number 2 of module 2. In the last lecture, I have given you a brief technical introduction to quantum entanglement and I started discussing the so-called Smith decomposition method which is a technique to characterize quantum entanglement in, particularly in bipartite system. But to understand Smith decomposition method, we needed to learn singular value decomposition method which we have done in the last lecture. In this lecture, I will first uh, revise the singular value decomposition method by illustrating an example and then we will begin discussing Smith decomposition method. So let us begin. Say find singular value decomposition of the matrix A is equal to 1 0 i 1 0 i as you can see this is a it's a 3 by 2 matrix that means 3 rows and 2 columns so to find out the svd singular value decomposition of this matrix so first let us calculate a dagger a now if a dagger if you find then users have to take the transpose of the matrix a and then take the complex conjugate so first row would become one zero minus i second row is also going to be one zero minus i and the matrix a is one zero i one zero i and if you do the multiplication you will get 2, 2, 2, 2. So as you can see, A dagger A is now a square matrix. You have started with a non-square matrix A and A dagger A is a square matrix of dimension 2 by 2, 2 rows, 2 columns. Now you can find out the eigenvalues of this matrix. Eigenvalues of A dagger A. If you set up the characteristic equation, you will find the eigenvalues as say lambda 1 is equal to 4 and lambda 2 you are going to the second eigenvalue you, you will get it to be 0 okay i just have solved this equation 2 minus lambda 2 2 2 minus lambda is equal to 0 and from this the characteristic equation you can set up you will get 2 minus lambda is equal to plus minus 2 so this is going to give you the eigenvalues as 4 and 0 now let us find out the eigenvectors corresponding to these two eigenvalues so eigenvectors eigenvectors vector for say lambda 1 is equal to 4 i think all of you know it if you do the calculation you will find the eigenvector for lambda 1 is equal to v as 1 by root 2 1 1 and similarly you can show that the eigenvector eigenvector for lambda 2 is equal to uh, 0 this is for lambda 1 for lambda 2 is equal to 0 v2 the eigenvector would become 1 by root 2 1 minus 1 so this can immediately give you the v matrix that we discussed the capital v matrix would become uh, you can construct it from these eigenvectors so first you write v1 v1 is 1 by root 2 1 1 and v2 is 1 by root 2 1 minus 1 so this is going to be your v matrix and the sigma matrix is easy to get because already we have got the uh, eigenvalues so this is going to be a 3 by 2 matrix right it has the same dimension as that of the original matrix a and it would be square root of lambda 1 0 0 square root of lambda 2 0 0 so therefore the sigma matrix would become lambda 1 is equal to 4 so square root of lambda 1 is 2 0 0 0 0 0 this is the sigma matrix 
Now what about the capital U matrix? What about this capital U matrix? So to do that, you have to find out A, A dagger. And if you do the mathematics, you can show calculation. If you do, you will find that the A, A dagger would become 2, 0, minus 2i, 0, 0, 0. 2i 0 2 and uh, again you have to find out the corresponding eigenvectors again here the eigenvalues of a dagger a is going to be the same eigenvectors uh, sorry eigenvalues i should first find out the eigenvalues eigenvalues are going to be the same as that of a a dagger only thing is that you can have an extra you know uh, eigenvalue here so what you are going to get is eigenvalues of a a dagger again you can get it by setting up the uh, character uh, what is this characteristic equation you are going to get the eigenvalues as a lambda 1 is equal to 4 lambda 2 is equal to 0 you will get three eigenvalues because it's a 3 by 3 matrix and lambda 3 is going to be equal to zero and corresponding eigenvectors you can find it out uh, for lambda one is equal to say zero or uh, okay so first let me do it for lambda one is equal to four right so lambda one is equal to four you will get eigenvectors as e1 is equal to one by root two 1 0 i and for lambda 2 is equal to 0 you can get you can show that the eigen vector is 0 1 0 and for lambda 3 is equal to 0 these eigen vectors are is going to be u3 is equal to 1 by root 2 1 0 minus i so therefore this capital u matrix you will get it as 1 by root 2 it is going to be constructed from these three eigenvectors u1 u2 and u3 so just let me write it column wise it would be 1 0 i 0 root 2 0 1 0 minus i okay so this this is your capital u so this way you will be able you are then uh, able to get the singular value decomposition of the matrix a and that would be capital u sigma v dagger you have found out this matrix v v matrix you have found out so you just have to take the hermitian conjugate of that and you can actually verify it taking the matrix products of these three matrices then if you work out you will be able to get the original matrix a now having learned the required mathematical tools we are ready to discuss the smith decomposition method let us consider a bipartite system and a bipartite system as you know has two components that is a system having two components out of these two components having one component living in living in the Hilbert space at C and other living in the Hilbert space at B. So it's a system consisting of two subsystems A and B and any arbitrary state k psi of the system can be expressed as it's a pure state so I can express it as a direct product state I am going to explain all the terms one by one summation is going from i is equal to 1 to dA where dA is the dimension of the Hilbert space at C and this other summation go from j is equal to 1 to db db is the dimension of the hilbert space hp and these coefficients are c i j 
and I have this uh, basis sketch phi a i direct product with phi b z where phi a i are the orthonormal basis these are the orthonormal basis in the Hilbert space H A. On the other hand, phi B J are the orthonormal basis in the Hilbert space H P. Okay, and overall the system lives in the Hilbert space. Overall, the system lives in the in the Hilbert space h a tensor product h b all right now you see these coefficients c i j uh, they form a matrix c with the dimension let me write here c i j this coefficient form a matrix say capital c with dimension that means the size of the matrix is da cross db that means it has da number of rows and db number of columns that's the size of the matrix uh, as you can see this may be a non-square matrix and in that case from singular value decomposition one can apply now apply the singular value decomposition to express this matrix C in the form capital U, capital sigma and now here this capital U is a square matrix as you know from SPD the method already you have learned it's a square matrix with size DA cross DA as you have seen that this capital C Mat is a matrix with size da cross db so capital u is a matrix with size da cross db while v is a square matrix again even its hermitian conjugate is also a square matrix it's a square matrix with size or dimension db cross db on the other hand this capital sigma it is a non-square matrix it may be a non-square matrix because not necessarily that uh, uh, you know a is not equal to b this sbd method can be applied even to a square matrix as well but in general this sigma matrix has a size uh, da cross db it's a non-square matrix which has non-zero elements along the main diagonal and both this capital u both this capital u and capital v are unitary matrix and it's very important to uh, remember this u and v are unitary matrix unitary matrix so we can therefore express let me write this uh, once again therefore we can express this uh, kth psi state uh, which we have written as say i goes from 1 to da j is equal to 1 to db i have c i j phi a i cross that's a tensor product with phi b j here c i j is a matrix c is i can express it using the sbd method as u sigma v dagger so this k psi can be expressed as k psi is equal to summation i is equal to 1 to da summation j is equal to 1 to db and i will now express this matrix uh, capital c uh, in terms of components c i j i'm just expressing in terms of matrix so this can also i express in this form i am going to write another sum going from say k is equal to one to 
the dimension would be such that it will go from the minimum of da and db all these things will be clear to you once i discuss some example later on and this coefficient cij in terms of this matrix c i can express in terms of capital u capital sigma and v as follows i will write the sum as this uik uh, dkk because sigma is a, a diagonal matrix uh, its main diagonal only i'm going to consider and then i have v j k star it's a hermitian conjugate and we are having the other parts as phi a i cross phi b j okay now let me define to simplify this big expression i can define let me define uh, quantities say k u a k small u a k is equal to summation i is equal to 1 to d a u i k phi a i and v a k uh, v b k let me write another kit phi v b k is equal to j is equal to 1 to d b v j k star phi b j okay now due to unitarity of capital u and capital v this case u a k and u b k they form orthonormal basis let me write here form orthonormal basis of the hilbert space at say and similarly vbk form orthonormal basis of hp okay so using this definition we can obtain this k psi in this form it's going from k is equal to 1 to minimum of d a and d b whatever is minimum out of d a and d b d b then you have this d k k u a k tensor product with v b k okay so to write it in a more convenient form i can write this in a more convenient form let me write psi is equal to k is equal to 1 to r lambda k u a k direct product or tensor product with v b k where uh, lambda k as you can see is equal to d k k and r is equal to minimum of d a d b actually let me uh, explain uh, this quantity r a little bit this refer to r refers to the number it refers to the number of non-zero diagonal elements non-zero diagonal elements of the uh, or in the capital sigma matrix and it, this has a name and this quantity is called r is named as the smith number it's called it's an important quantity this is called smith number of the state k psi and the coefficients the coefficients lambdas the coefficients lambda k has also a name are called 
are called speed coefficients. It is easy to show easy to show that I encourage you to do it yourself. It's very trivial that summation over k mod lambda k square is equal to 1 and you can show it because of the fact that this state psi k psi is normalized so using this uh, fact you can easily show that summation over lambda k square mod lambda k square is equal to 1 okay now before i go further just quickly let me also uh, write down the density operator for the bipartite system using this uh, new form where we have uh, written the k psi in this particular form and this form is known as the smith form this is what is basically smith decomposition right it may be useful to write the density operator for the bipartite system using this smith decomposition form the smith decomposition form that we have is uh, this k psi is equal to k is equal to 1 to r lambda k u a k tensor product with v bk this is the so-called speed decomposition form and the corresponding density operator you can easily uh, work out yourself and you can see that it would be summation over k and summation over l lambda k lambda l star u a k the bra u a l direct product to it k v k and bra v b l i think you can easily follow it it's easy to follow from the form that i have written from here using this you can easily get it so we have seen that every bipartite system in a pure state can be rewritten in terms of smith decomposition let us now illustrate this method using a quick example consider a bipartite state given by this state k psi is equal to half phi a1 phi b1 plus phi a1 phi b2 all these phi's are orthonormal states phi b2 plus i phi a3 phi b1 plus i phi a3 phi b2 okay this is the kth state given to you now this can be rewritten this particular given state can be rewritten as follows it can be rewritten as k psi is equal to summation i is equal to 1 to 3 and summation j is equal to 1 to 2 c i z c i z phi a i as you can see phi a i here i goes from 1 to 3 right as you can see and in the process as you can see phi a 2 would be equal to 0 but anyhow the suffix i goes from 1 to 3 it would be direct product with phi b j and j goes from 1 to 2 as you can see here in this expression we have phi b 1 and phi b 2 is there so it goes j goes from that's why from 1 to 2 so obviously this is a uh, pure state and this coefficients c i j form a matrix this coefficients c i j would be 1 1 0 0 i i so this is a 
non square matrix so it is a 3 by 2 matrix 3 rows it's a 3 by 2 matrix 3 rows and 2 columns okay and this matrix uh, we can express in the form of SVD in fact we have actually already worked out the singular value decomposition of this matrix a few minutes back and we can use those results now from the example that we have done in the context of singular value decomposition we have exactly used this particular matrix c oh let me write here instead of c i j let me write capital c that's the matrix i have formed from this coefficient c i j and now this matrix can be written in the singular value decomposition form when we already worked out it would be u capital sigma v uh, hermitian conjugate of the v matrix we have already worked out this capital u matrix in the example that we have done a little while back it is 1 by root 2 1 0 1 0 root 2 0 i 0 minus i and capital sigma is 2 0 0 0 0 0 so this capital sigma matrix has only one uh, non-zero diagonal element so or you can write it as 1 0 0 0 0 0 and this matrix v capital v matrix we worked out as 1 by root 2 1 1 1 minus 1 we want to write k psi in the smith decomposition form as follows k psi is equal to summation k is equal to 1 to r lambda k u a k tensor product with v b k small v b k now r is equal to 1 here now r is equal to 1 why because the number of non-zero elements in the sigma matrix is 1 that's why r is equal to 1 as per our definition of r that's called the speed number r is equal to 1 as the number of non-zero elements in sigma matrix is equal to 1 so k psi is equal to in the smith decomposition form summation k is equal to 1 to 1 lambda k u a k tensor product with v b k now what about lambda k what is this now from the sigma matrix let me write the sigma matrix we obtain as 2 0 0 0 0 0 and because lambda k is equal to dkk it may occur to that you should take lambda k is equal to 2 but uh, because k uh, runs from 1 to 1 that means we have only one lambda that is lambda 1 so you may write lambda 1 is equal to 2 but you have to be careful here because lambda has to satisfy this equation lambda k square is equal to 1 right and this means that we have to take the normalized form of lambda and lambda 1 you better take it as 1 okay so therefore k psi we should write as the summation is has no meaning now only we have only one term that is lambda 1 only one coefficient lambda 1 and other terms are u a 1 direct product with v b 1 so this is the speed decomposition form of the example that we have considered but now let us find out 
what is u a 1 and what is k v 1 v v 1 now as per the definition of k u a k we had summation i is equal to 1 to 3 small u i k phi a i and this we can now because k is equal to 1 therefore we can now write e u a 1 is equal to if i open it up i will have e u 1 1 phi a 1 plus e u 2 1 phi a 2 plus e u 3 1 phi a 3 right now the fact is that u a 2 phi a 2 get phi a 2 is equal to 0 so i will have u 1 1 phi a 1 plus u 3 1 phi a 3 now look at the matrix elements of capital u capital u matrix if you recall this was 1 by root 2 1 0 1 0 root 2 0 i 0 minus i so from here you can easily see that u 1 1 is equal to 1 by root 2 and u 3 1 is equal to i by root 2 so therefore you have the kth u a 1 is equal to 1 by root 2 phi a 1 plus i phi a 3 okay what about v b 1 similarly you can work it out i leave it to you similarly you can show that kth v b 1 is equal to 1 by root 2 phi v b1 plus phi b2 so we can write the given k psi in the smith form as follows k psi is equal to u a1 v b1 and if i write u a1 k u a1 is 1 by root 2 phi a1 plus i phi a3 tensor product 1 by root 2 phi b1 plus phi b2 or half k phi a1 plus i k phi a3 tensor product with phi b1 k phi b1 plus k phi b2 now you please see that i am able to write the smith form here in such a way that this part refers to the subsystem or one component called a component a or subsystem a on the other hand this one i write for sus subsystem b so these states are uh, separable here and in this example here the so-called smith number r is equal to 1 and the state is separable so it implies so i can conclude that if r is equal to 1 it is not a an entangled state it's a separable state it's not an entangled state on the other hand if you find that for a given bipartite state r is greater than 1 that may imply that 
the bipartite state bipartite state is not separable in other words it is entangled okay now some final words on speed decomposition there are various form of speed speed decomposition in the literature for example sometime you may see this particular form say k psi is equal to summation i is equal to 1 to r square root of s i u a i tensor product with v b i this is for a bipartite system with the condition that with summation sum over s i is equal to 1 where s i is greater than 0 these are called speed coefficient just like the number lambda i's and r is basically a natural number it's a number and it is called r is the speed number it's called the speed number of the state k psi in fact it is basically the same thing we wrote for speed decomposition of uh, k psi just to remind once again as a final comment we have written and we are going to take this particular form in this course uh, of speed decomposition summation over say k goes from 1 to r lambda k u a k direct product or tensor product with v b k okay so this is the form we are going to use in this course and if you look at the correspondence here lambda k refers to square root of s k in the previous expression and lambda k is terms, termed as smith coefficient now before i end this lecture let me now briefly talk about entanglement of mixed states we already know that the mixed state can be represented by a density operator say rho is equal to sum over j pj k phi j bra phi j now consider a composite system where it has consisting of say subsystem a and b subsystem a belongs to the hilbert space h a and the system b belongs to the subsist uh, hilbert space subsystem b belongs to the hilbert space h b now let rho be a mixed state uh, over the hilbert space h is equal to h a tensor product with h b rho is a product state is a product state in h in the hilbert space h if there are mixed state there are mixed state rho a belonging to the to a set of linear operators on a hilbert space h a that means rho a as you know it's a density operator it's an operator so it's a operator on a hilbert space h a belongs to all set of linear operators the that is in the hilbert space h a similarly say uh, rho b which is the mixed state for corresponding to the subsystem b and it also belongs to the set of linear operators in the hilbert space h b okay and rho is such that rho is equal to direct product of the uh, density matrices 
corresponding to the subsystem A and subsystem B. And if we can write it in this form, obviously rho is a product state. What about the case when we have a n number of such product states forming a mixed states? How can we characterize if they are separable or not? There is a concept called convexity which may be useful in this context. Let us discuss it. Say we have rho 1, rho 2, rho n, n number of uh, product states are there that belong to a set of linear operators in the Hilbert space H and in that case then the mixed state then the mixed state which is formed out of this all these product states belonging to the linear operator in the Hilbert space H is separable is separable if there are convex weights i will explain what it is there are convex weights denoted by say wi which is greater than zero and also sum of all w's is equal to one such that rho is equal to summation i to n i is equal to 1 to n w i rho i now what i mean by convexity is the following by convexity i mean the following i mean that for every pair for every pair rho 1 rho 2 which belongs to one of the rho i's the set of operators the set of operators rho i cap in fact these are also operators rho 1 rho 2 rho i so they form a for every pair rho 1 rho 2 the set of operators rho i form a convex set convex set if rho you can write as w1 rho1 plus w2 rho, rho2 so this is valid for every uh, you know component that is belonging to the set of operators rho 1 rho 2 up to rho l you can write such relations of this type if you can do that with the condition w1 plus w2 is equal to 1 so this is what we mean by convexity and this is a very simple meaning it means that for any two members form a convex set say rho 1 rho 2 they form a convex set if they can be connected by a straight line uh, without leaving the set so this is what i mean by a convex set so as you can see in this convex set rho 1 and rho 2 can be connected to each other without leaving the set on the other hand by a non-convex set i mean the following say i have this member here rho 1 and this is rho 2 and if i want to connect rho 1 and rho 2 by a straight line so as you can see i have to leave the set right as you can see i have to leave the set so, so it's an example of a non-convex set so a convex set so a convex set of rho is equal to rho 1 rho 2 up to rho n are separable that means in simple words if 
the product states rho 1 rho 2 up to rho n form a convex set then they are separable on the other hand rho is entangled if it is not separable on the other hand rho is entangled if it is not separable let me stop now in this lecture we have learned an important characterizing method of quantum entanglement in terms of the so-called smith decomposition method in the next lecture i am going to discuss the epr paradox and bell's inequalities and so on this may help you to get an intuitive understanding of quantum entanglement so see you in the next lecture thank you so much Thank you.